the films and everything I'm prepared <laughs> I love that song, mate. I love it. It's banging. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen, ladies. Welcome to Ace Podcast Nation. I am Sai. This is the home of the revamped new look Kevin McNaughton show. It is no longer crazy football. This is Super Kev Unscripted. This is episode number three. And this is the Christmas special. We've got props. We've got <laughs> would you rathers. And we've got people to send us questions it's going to be fun we're going to finish off the show as ever with our new new, latest top 10 list and it will be the top 10 greatest christmas films of all time decided by us with contributions from the live chat and speaking of the live chat we are live on facebook youtube twitter Ace, ace podcast nation is also home to many great shows and series featuring top guests, expert analysts, and more. So please follow us on social media for more information on upcoming shows and guests. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's the big one. That really helps us out the most. And uh, you can get all the shows first because everything goes on YouTube first, apart from the live shows, obviously. And uh, you can also download the audio versions at your favorite radio and podcast platform. Just search Ace Podcast Nation. And they will be there. Super Kev Unscripted is unique, different to all our other shows. As in this series, I do absolutely zero research. We don't focus just on the guest's career. All the questions and topics are set by the people. Nothing is off limits. There is no censors. There is no scripts. We just go with it and we just talk about whatever we want to talk about, whatever we go. We, uh, we do have a little bit of guidance, like we all do some Would You Rathers. And we have our top 10 list. But other than that, it's just a, a free for all. Joining me for this series as ever is former Scotland international, ex Aberdeen, Bolton Wanderers, Cardiff City defender, of course, the King of Dundee with his goblet of fire. It is Super Kevin McNaughton. Welcome back, my friend. How are you? And is that red wine? It's not red wine. I'm very well, but it is a large, large glass of gin a goblet as you said and it's oh, a magnificent dear. vessel isn't it really look at it look at this bad boy beautiful hold the phone stop everything reese david evans has just asked are you considering die hard to be a christmas film of course it is <sighs> it's like the christmas film and a die hard Quite 2 is well. the I've christmas the film list down. i've written a list down then. so you've done you preparation Preparations. I don't away. normally, but I had a little bit of time before I came on here, and I thought to myself, I might as well write something down. Yeah, see, James wants silver hair like us. I well, consider listen, us because I've got more grey hair than bats, you. The wing backs are getting a wee bit deeper. I know yours are, yours are going, yours are basically Line are just growing the bench, into my face, they? and yeah, they're everywhere they take it over. We wing backs are getting deeper, but I'll tell you what, Mike. My grey hairs, like still COVID, rocking it. just spreading. Um, Matt Hall says, I love that goblet. Matt Corp says, love it, Kev. Wish we had the likes of you playing in the derby game. So I'll tell you a little secret, boys and girls. Kevin has not watched the South, South Wales derby, and I think we'll all agree that he is very lucky that he didn't experience that shower of shit. So there we go. No. Um, 
So I want to start tonight, today, mate. Um, obviously, we uh, we do we like to do the old would you rather's to uh, to get the show going. Yeah. And uh, on the last episode, old JD, he uh, he oh, sent one in for us. Sent oh, us an guy. email, and uh, we Crazy were just garlic. all we were all jolly and happy like we are now. And then uh, it was like I can't even remember what it was. It was something about would something you rather a dying Scotsman or a Scotsman die or something else. Yeah. And it just what, brought, it brought the tone down. We are all a bit sad. See, when you just need your spirits lifted, I think JD comes in and just... He does well, that, mate, he does that job, see, doesn't he? You want to see this email. So, JD, he, uh, he lives in America. He lives in New York. Okay, so he's, well, uh, he's sent me he a little message. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't watch it live because of time difference and all this sort of shit. <laughs> so, does he not? No, he just watches. He records, like, watches it afterwards. Oh, no. So, uh, he sent us a little message... But um, Gavin says, not worth watching the South Wales Derby. It was piss poor. Uh, Matt Corp said, what a joke. Uh, James Costley, straight in there with his Christmas films. We'll have a look at those later. Hey, steady on, James. We're, we're early doors yet, mate. You know you're Come excited. I know it's just, Christmas. Just getting into the gin. Come on, mate. Well, Gavin Randall says, Gladiator, mate. That's not a Christmas film, is it? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Gladiator. That's not When's, that's when's not. that ever been a Christmas film? Did it come out in December, maybe? I don't know. So straight, I know I'm not having that one at all. Did you oh, James, James Costley in there straight away with a would you rather? We'll have that in a minute. Oh, you, come on then. Square, go. Come on. But, 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 I'm going to read this message. So this is from JD who sent that very dark would you rather. And it was... He's from America. But, he's probably yeah, just counting He's a Welshman though. So is he? Yeah. Mm, he's, a, he's a Welshman living in New York. Is he um, one of these so, Americans that pretends they're Welsh, though? You've never heard well, them come to him when you're on holiday in America. Well, I'm Scottish. You're no Scottish, love. You're not <laughs> Scottish. You weren't born in Scotland. No, but I've got Scottish blood. You've not got Scottish blood. It was probably about 75 to other us. <laughs> Honestly. The amount of people came up to me and said they were Scottish. I was like, you're no I Scottish, know. mate. He's, you're yeah, so far say, from say Scottish. Say to me all the time, mate. All the time. Is that, is that Gavin, Gavin says he was only joking about Gladiator. Yeah, yeah, I'm not so sure, brother. I don't I think, think so. I think it was a serious, serious suggestion. He's taken over from Rob Boyles. Uh, what did he, so what did he suggest? <laughs> Rob. Toy Story Moana. or something. Is the best. Moana. Moana is the best film ever. We yeah, will I'm never, not forgetting that. We ever. will never forget that, Rob. Never live that down. Um, right, we've got a couple of questions as well. We'll get to this. So JD sends a message. He says, Dear lads, big fan of the channel. Thank you. The show is one of my faves. Good man. Good start. He said, I said that would you rather with the best of intentions and obviously do not wish any harm to Scotsman worldwide. It was a hypothetical scenario. He says, with the dark theme continuing in this grim time of year. <laughs> Great. Uh, he says, please answer me the following. Would you rather accidentally send a naughty picture to your dad or your boss? My boss? Uh, so probably prefer it to my dad. My dad would laugh it off. Yeah. Dad would actually say, go on, son. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that meant for? Good go effort. on, wee man. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that meant for? My boss, on the other hand, maybe like... Um, yeah. Come on, Kev. That's not uh, professional. Like, no, that's, it's not loud in the workplace, that, Kevin. Um, yeah. It's 2020, mate. Come on. It's 2020, mate. You, you <laughs> find yourself down to human resources in a minute. <laughs> Trying um, to explain that. And yeah, he says, he says, uh, have a good Christmas. Have a great Christmas. And he says, Kev, my wife is ready. Legs are king Kimbo. Okay. Um, regards, JD, a Welsh lad stuck in New York City. So well, good to hear. Always well, good JD, to hear thank you for the message, mate. And we're about to. We're sorry, we're about to. <laughs> just as NYC. <laughs> but, yeah, he's like, the what's the address? The address. <laughs> yeah. Postcode, please. Postcode. <laughs> Might be out there next year. <laughs> just in case. Uh, Steve McMahon says Gladiator is a Christmas <laughs> film if you get it in the stocking. This, <laughs> this is my friend <laughs> he's back. again. He's back. Yes, if you get right. it in the stocking, what do you mean? As in the DVD? <laughs> yeah, if you get if you get Gladiator yeah, for Christmas, then it becomes a Christmas film, I guess. But we're not having that. I'm Stephen, not having that at all. Um, Stephen Rob's, was recently isolated for COVID, and it's obviously affected his brain. <laughs> yeah, he's got nuts. He's lost there. Yeah, Rob nuts. Boyle, maybe on the same oh, lines. He, he says Moana is still a goat. <sighs> oh, I love. Oh, I, can't, I don't know about you, mate. See when you're like really 
knackered and you think, oh, put a really classic on. You just go, yeah. you dig deep Straight and you look Milano, for Milana, didn't, didn't you? That's what you go for. It's yeah. a go-to. So uh, as we're on, would you rather, uh, Big James Costley says, would Kev rather be an English or a Jack? Oof. Straight oh. in there. It's, 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 rather it's be a, English. Asking a, Scot- a Scot- Scotsman if he'd rather be English or a Jack. Oof. Straight in there. Then, no, I'm not, no I'd, I'd be, it's, it's quite... It's, it's quite hard. I'd, I'd rather be English. Because my daughter's English, so yeah. there you go. This, I've got a, I've got a minute bit of love for English, so there's a wee bit there. Uh, on the other hand, you can see that amount <laughs> there for the jacks. So that's <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you can see it right in, in between Just, there. That minuscule, minuscule amount of. Friendly banter. It's just about there somewhere. <laughs> in there. In between those fingers. Um, Andy John says we could do a Kev now. Uh, Rob Boyle sends in a would you rather. He says, would you rather... i got to read this right now. He said, would you rather Katie Price uh, after a sesh with Duffy in brackets or Katie Hopkins? Sorry, what? what ask Katie, Katie, a... Katie, Katie, Katie Price or... Katie after a session, he says. After a sesh, sesh with Duffy. Duffy who? What Duffy? I don't know. I don't really. I don't really. They mean Duff- Duff- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Right. Katie Price or Katie Hopkins? I don't think well, there's much of a. Well, there's not, not much of a choice, let's is it? Be there? honest. Yeah, there's no choice there. there is Unless you've got answer. like some sort of like granny. Not granny, but like nah. older women fetish. No, there's, there's there's a weird thing. I've been to a few like events and stuff. Rob Rye right, says older... Shane Duffy. So apparently Shane Duffy has been been what? Kate Price, I suppose. I don't know. So basically, know. it sounds like Rob is saying, "Would you rather Katie Price after Shane Duffy or straight Kate after? Hopkins? As yeah, like yeah, like, yeah. Seconds after, oh. like slappy seconds, I suppose." Ugh. Well, sure, fancy that. Yeah, Katie Hopkins suddenly looks. Oh, she sounds, <laughs> a, bit, sounds a, wee, all a, a wee bit more appetising. I tell you. There we go. The Scottish oh. accents in. Can't take so it that out. Was about, that wasn't a bad. That was you. a good um, one. Katie, Katie. It's the, it's the thought of one of the, the Katie's. two. Jesus Christ! I'm not sure about it's that. A, what, where this has gone? This was not a football <laughs> and a Christmas. <laughs> show. This is Never the Woody Rather. It's always starts off well, mate. But the thing is, that's the point of would you rather, isn't it? It's, put, it's putting you in like yeah, a, a, a wee, a wee bit situation. of discomfort. Yeah, I think I'm... Because if they're easy, it's boring, isn't it? Because I well, did think, well, well Katie Price or Katie Hopkins, that's easy, isn't well, it? You don't but know then, if Katie's, Katie Hopkins has been with somebody. Mm, but you never know, do you? So, yeah. So, but right. I suppose if you just it was a straight choice between the two... You'd go with Kate, like, Kate Price, I guess, Shane wouldn't you? just walks out the room and gives like a high five and says, Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, I got it. But then Nailing Kate, the Kate Price is like throwing a sausage at a window arcade, isn't it? It's, oof, not sure oh, about that. Then that could be the end of me. I could just get lost in it. Yeah, yeah, well. Rob says, sorry, he, 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 he just came to him. Um, You've been but, thinking about it for a long time, Rob. So yeah, he's been, boy, he's been boiling that up since episode one, I reckon. Um, so let's let's try and take it like a bit, a bit, Probably better go another way, sort of yeah, Christmas let's, let's, sort of theme, let's the, go. the family sort of theme. Yeah, well, I don't think that was ever going to happen. Would no. you rather be able to travel everywhere for free, or eat anywhere for free? Well, oh, is that, that is a tough one because sometimes you go to places where they love giving you food, and they just like, mm. oh, here's a silver-headed stranger. Come have some food. <laughs> so, oh, travel's appealing, but then again, mm, you just you imagine well, just mate. walking. You imagine walking into a place and then it's like, oh, you got it down ya. And your favourite restaurant? Oh no, I've got to go food, food, hundred percent food. You could travel anywhere. For, you can still travel anywhere for you. Use your legs. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's like you could fly. fly you could fly anywhere for well, free, and you could get a ferry. The last show, for free. somebody said something about flying. At a really slow pace. Nobody wants to fly at that pace. Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? I'm not sure nah, about that one. I think we're, yeah. I'm thinking I'm filling the boots. I'm becoming a beast and just go like every single place I'm going to go, whoa, get some food. If I, if I could eat anywhere for free, I reckon I'd end up like about 50 stone, no? 
Think, think about think about ah, you could I'm waiting to go. Years, no, man. you can go that. Come on, see your mates, your kids, and that go. Come on, I don't pay for food. Come on. And plus, if you have, if you just because you can travel everywhere free, doesn't mean everyone else can. So like, you'd be like, oh That's yeah, let's go I mean. to let, let's go to Australia or whatever tomorrow, the and you'd be on That's your own. It would, it would probably be an adventure, but. What would the people in the chat rather do? Would they rather travel everywhere for free or eat it everywhere for free? And um, the next one is... Oh, I think you this think is, about it, you could just pay for tickets around the world and then you get there, well, what am I going to do for food? I eat for free. <laughs> there you go. So, what we should do is, I, is, is, is I, get, I, get the, uh, I get to travel everywhere for free, you get to eat everywhere for free. Oh, what, we're sorted. What sorted. Jason Jones says, travel everywhere for 100%. So does Gavin Randall says, travel everywhere for Why? 100%. What are you going to do once you've travelled the world? You're just going to go, now I'm going to starve. <laughs> well, yeah, you can still, you can still eat. You've just no, got, you to pay. You got to pay your no, way. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> would you, this is a good one. Would you, be, would you rather be funny but really stupid or boring but really smart? Oh, smart all the way. Get yourself some incredible jobs. And <laughs> Listen, this is why I'm unemployed at the moment. <laughs> I've got this superpower. <laughs> I love that. It does not get you anywhere in life. <laughs> you yeah, could wow. be a fucking barrel of laughs and <laughs> skint. <laughs> Thankfully, I fell upon a football career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would have been just sat on my own. I got guys. sent out of school like that. Oh, fucking hope you make a football, aren't it? <laughs> Please don't fail. fail. <laughs> Please don't fail as a football, aren't it? <laughs> we'll see you at the job centre next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you rather be famous or rich? Oh, rich every day of the week. Yeah. Who wants to be famous? I know, I know. Who wants people annoying them? And then just no actually getting the perks just of it. On your no, nerves, like. If you're famous with money, maybe. But, but would you rather would you rather like be, be like a multi multi millionaire who no one knows who you are? Oh, hundred percent. Or a multi millionaire where you well, followed that's around a question, isn't it? That's by a the paparazzi question. and because there is see, perks to that as well because people. Like pay for you get free, take free. The, oh, you get free stuff, and you get in places for free. Yeah, like the richer that, you are, the more if, more free if stuff you're you are. minted. You're just you're paying to go in places anyway, so you're not that bothered. I think you just want to be minted, don't you? Really? Yeah, I like I always say, even if I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell anyone. I'd just disappear. I know. I won it last week, mate, and I never told anybody. I'm just that's why I'm sitting here. Yeah, it's just pretending. Stumble. It's just pretending. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of everyone's saying food, mate. Um, oh. Rob, James, uh, uh, oh no, James says, uh, eat, yeah, they also, also, oh, food, food. 100% food, food. then you can long. sell it, why don't you just, like, go, oh, thank you, and then you go to the other, you go, five for this, uh, J you Jason, go. Gavin says, travel, then you can pay for your, food. you can pay for your travel, with your free wow, food, Reese, Reese, David Evans said, uh, free food, free wives, I think it's only fair, Kev has to pay for travel, <laughs> quite right, you've got to pay for something, haven't well, you? The wives involved. Yeah, you've got you've got to pay. You've got to pay for the ticket. And, uh, right. Uh, what else we got? Uh, James Costley says, "If you ain't famous, you don't have to walk on eggshells as much." It's very true. If no one knows who you are, you basically do what you want, can't you? Can't um, let... Matt Hall says, "What's Matt saying?" That's my friend. He says, dude. "Would you rather crisps and Coca Cola or leftover Corfu special with salad?" Hundred, but this is a, this is a personal question because he knows I love a leftover Corfu special, which is like a mixed kebab. You know, yes. like when you have a like you get when you're on a night out and you have loads of food and you can't mm. finish it, and it's still in the tray the next day. Yeah, it's perfectly good, isn't it? It's perfectly good. Be damn right it is. Do you go for it? Do you attack it the next day? I attack it. Yeah, hundred percent, oh. mate. I'd have it cold or hot. Depends oh. how I feel. I'd eat it straight away. Sometimes I have breakfast, sometimes have hot, I have tea. 
See, I'm one of these people, if you have it hot, you're drying it out, so you think to yourself... Yeah, you've got to be careful, haven't you? got to be careful. You've got to balance here. You've got Here's a question for you, then. Yep. On the kebabs, would you... Do you, do you only have them when you have a beer? Or... No. Would you... I have them. I had, we like them, you know. No. Nice. I'd heal them. Yeah, with the kids. It's we like have them with the kids, they love them. Kids love them. It's like auction to me, kebabs. Me and uh, me and the missus will share like a big, like an extra large one. The kids allow a share one. Are you talking Bloody about lovely, what like. kind of kebab are you talking about? You talking so, about the... I uh, we and we have like um, you have like a mig. We have a mixed kebab, so it's um, like a big yeah. tray, pita bread, and then you have some of the donner off the big elephant foot, and then you have some of the chicken tikka, and then you have loads of like salad and garlic sauce and so barbecue sauce. Decent. Back in the day, I used to have garlic and chili sauce, but I obviously with Crohn's uh, Crohn's disease, chili sauce is not you know kebabs not good for it, but uh, chili sauce is a is a is a no go for me. Okay. So we have barbecue sauce, but barbecue and it's got to be barbecue and garlic sauce though. I love garlic sauce. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm the same. I like um, I'm no see, but the mm. the donut kebab that is a big bag of hard one for me the next day. So yeah, got I'm a care. fan of well, the, the mix kebab. Tell you what, mate. When you come uh, when you come down to Cardiff and we yep. film that film that thing, we will. Oh, I wasn't supposed to talk about that. <gasps> Top secret. But um, when you come down to Cardiff, we will. Um, I'll take you to my kebab place. Good. Proper. Sounds good proper. to me. Proper. Um, let's have a look at some of these comments. James Costey, oh, you read that one. Oh, Steve McMahon. Oh, big oh, Steve. McMahon. Oh, big Steve. Big Stevie. McMahon. He What's says, uh, "Would you rather go paintballing?" Or a pedalo ride in Ireland. I feel like there's a story behind that. There is a hundred percent a story behind that. Come on, then. Well, I was story on a, time. I was, in, I was on a stag do. It's about him, thankfully. It's not about me. No, no, no. Uh, I was on a stag do in Ireland, uh, a little place called Bantry. We went on. We've been drinking heavily for a couple of days. Anyway, we go in the middle of nowhere where there is a one pub. There is a dock. There is about seven pedalos that are tied up for the winter because it is very, very cold. Uh, and uh, the guy says to us, do you want to go paintballing? And we were like, nah, mate, it's so cold. <laughs> we're hungover. <laughs> Me and my Scotch pals were just like, you guys, just enjoy yourself. So we're having a few drinks in this pub. You can see one of my friends disappearing. <laughs> Stephen McMahon. He disappears for a wee bit, and we're all like, kind of, what's happened with him? Anyway, we go down to have a look, and he is in the docks on a pedalo that has been tied up for winter that should not be in the docks, because there is a lot of ferries coming in and out of that dock area, and it's winter, and these things should be out. Anyway, anybody with some sort of sense in their mind would just pedal their arses back to the shore, tie it back up. But he couldn't figure out how to pedal the thing back into the shore. So for the next hour or so, he was going around in a circle whilst the ferries were still trying to navigate the bay. So it was just like... (laughs) Just like... There was an actual ferry shimmying around a pedalo to try and dock into a ferry. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was just like... He went... Uh, please, <laughs> please come back. Please come. But we, we couldn't get Jesus. a hold of him on his phone. Couldn't get, he couldn't get a signal. So we're like, what is he doing? Why is he not coming back in? He'd been out there for about an hour and a half. He'd been soaked through. The rain started to come through. Like, surely he wants to come back in. Anyway, go back up to the bar that we're drinking in. The girl behind the bar has got a canoe, so like the the Baywatch music comes on. Boom, 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 boom. She's like, ah, (laughs) boom, 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 boom. She goes, grabs the canoe (laughs) in the pub and she's like, I'll go and get him. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Some people dread the mountain. <laughs> this big, slightly overweight girl, barmaid, still, <laughs> still in a barmaid gear, starts going, dun, 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 dun. comes down, chucks it into the thing, 
goes out, gets up, ties him up, takes him back. <laughs> he comes oh, back oh my word! Classic. <laughs> he is soaked through. Stephen, he made it. He's safe. You've made it home, and he's alive today. To tell the story. Tell the story. Tell, tell the story. <laughs> he lets you tell the story for him. Yeah, I like even tell better. The story. Yeah, I love it. Love it. I love it. So yeah, look. Lots of comments and questions. So let's have a quick look at these. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Gavin Randall says he'd rather paintball in. No, yeah. <laughs> he'd rather go paintball into the pub. Yeah. yeah. Well, n- uh, no, yeah. Gavin. I think no, yeah knows you because he Who? said something else about it. It's, it's his, his YouTube name is no, yeah. So his first comment was. Tell the Silverback that Sunderland are losing to Wimbledon, and if it stays the same, I'm looking for a new partner to build the Benidorm fund up. Yeah, and then, uh, and then uh, he commented a bit later on. He said, "Ask Kevin about the time he got knocked over by a golf buggy." Oh, yeah. Do you want to, do you want to hear that story? Oh yeah, I certainly part. do. Well, it's not a good story. Uh, my <laughs> part, anyway. Right. So. See, when you're on holiday and you're on these all-inclusive places and it's... <sighs> well, I just, I was, I'm staring, like, I'm in this, I'm looking in through a crash. My wife had been drinking at the time and I'd, I'd lost her. So I thought, oh, she's maybe taking the kids up to the kids club. So anyway, I'm standing there looking through to the kids club on this cart path. And... Uh... <laughs> Anyway, you know, it's getting quite dark. I'm trying to look through this thing. And then I had black on. I had all black on. So there's a guy driving the golf buggies, you know, just like driving them around the place. Yeah. So you'd like to think these guys would see a human being on one of these golf thingies. (laughs) But they didn't. No. So as I'm looking through this thing, trying to see if my kids are in there. (laughs) I get knocked Jesus. over. So that is dodgy as hell. Yeah. Oh, honestly, I was on the floor. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I've got obviously I've got a plate in my leg from when I broke my leg. I was like, "Oh my god!" My plate in my leg. Plate in my more holiday. Curled up in a ball. And uh, anyway, and I didn't. Lee Trundle got guy, from behind the wheel. The guy and said, "All right, guy, kid." This guy came out and went, "Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry." Uh, I, uh, to, I, I, I am in a rush. I have to go. <laughs> I'm in a rush. I've, I've never <laughs> driven one of these before. It's all right, mate. I've only broke my leg. It's fine. Just you, just you head off, mate. Anyway, because you give Don't us a lift in here at his hospital. <laughs> nah, they just shot off. Jesus. I, just, I thought. Did you do like, any it. proper damage? Nah, it was just. It was one of them. Just the shock pride, of it. Like... My pride and um, my. Just badly bruised. It's just funny though, Scottish, just, Scottish could, hard man. As I looked up, there was a lot of English tourists, and I was like, "Oh no, can't show no, can't show any, uh, can't show pain." No even witness. Even though we're sitting there, like, uh, yeah. inside, inside, I'm like, uh, 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 uh. outside, I'm like, "Oh, I'm, ah, you joker, you, you cheeky <laughs> rascal, <laughs> you cheeky bugger." You no, need to you. Put your, you need to put your contacts in. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, the Jason Jones says leftover kebab is delicious. Kelly says elephant leg, and then she just put like a sick emoji. Rob Boyle says you should have a bit of mint, uh, like the yogurt and mint sauce on your kebab. No, I hate that minty sauce. Oh, Jesus, Rob is Rob, having a honestly, Rob man. is having a nightmare. Rob, nightmare. See, when you suggest something good, we are going to actually stop and just stand up and applaud you. That's it, mate. Because I think it's... at this moment in time, you are so far, far behind it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Moana. I, there was another in. I don't even know what the other one was. It was, it was something really else bad. last week, wasn't it? It was terrible. Really, really bad. Film choice. Come on. Up your game, Rob. Come on. Rob, you're actually going first on this Christmas list. Yeah. Spot on, Because we so... are going to pick the bones of you so badly. Rip you apart. We're going to right, take a couple of raptors. This is going to be. I think this will be the last. Would you rather? <laughs> Unless we get a particularly good one. Uh, Liam Kelly says, "Would you rather two-footed a fifty-fifty with Lee Trundle or Alan Tate?" I've never Ooh. played against Lee Trundle, so I'd probably say Alan Tate. What was he Who like? He seems like a bit of a cock, to be honest. 
I don't I just nah I don't you might know not the guy. Like, nah I don't know the guy don't know the guy don't is know it him. I always get him and um, the other one who used to play centre back mixed up uh, what's his, and I always forget which one one of them is like a bit of a dick Who's and then the, the other one's alright no, one of them looks like Beaker you know Beaker from um, Sesame Street yeah probably do him in Who's speaker from Sesame Street? I don't know. It's Alan Tate. Who was the other? There was another centre back around the same go time. On, go on Google. Go on, go on your computer there and go Google. Beaker. Go on my second screen. Beaker. Sesame Beaker. Street. Sesame Beaker. Street. That Beaker. Is Alan Tate. Yeah, I'll truth with him. Just because he so, looks like Beaker. <laughs> Alan Tate doesn't look like him, mate. Oh, I know who it is, though. You just reminded. Uh, it's the wee guy off of Sesame Street. Oh, it's the other it's one. Beaker, is it? oh, what's his name? Mad Gary Santa Monk. Stuff. Thank you, Jamie. Gary Monk. He doesn't look like Beaker. He's the other one. What's on? What's going on? It is Gary Monk. Looks like Beaker. I would if, see if I'd been if we had a script and we and we stuck to anything and we planned this show. Oh, I'd have side by no, side no. like oh, we'd yeah. could have had a side by side image. Yeah, it is Gary Monk. He does look like Beaker. I've got to say. He? Yeah, he okay. does. Yeah. Look, I yeah, can there's... I can bring. I'll bring it. I'd even bring it up for you. Look. Um, can you bring up? I can bring it up. Watch that's just just technology. Like this that's incredible technology, technology up there. Oh, it's flickering. There you go. Can you see him? The speaker. Yeah. Yeah, the speaker. We beaker. We beaker. Ah, we beaker. But yeah. So uh, if I, obviously if people send in more would you rather's, then I might um, I might do it. And I know like um, a couple of people have sent in super chats on YouTube and stuff recently on some of the live shows. Obviously, I will read out those because they're sending beer money and stuff so we've got to you know, oh, always going to read those be but um, just double check now new questions so there was a couple of questions um, obviously you didn't see the uh, the old South Wales derby on the weekend Rob Boyle says he's already got his list Rob Jesus. is always ready with his list Jason, Jason Jones unbelievable, just says uh Jason David Jones says, Alan Tate shagged my missus a few years ago. Both dirty rats. And then he follows that up with another comment and says, Alan Xmas. Tate. He does say, Xmas. He says, Alan Tate shagged his missus. Alan Tate. Yeah. Jesus. Maybe he does Very deserve lovely. a two-footed tackle. Your missus is a real down low life because he's not even good looking, is he? Let's be honest. See if it was like George Clooney or something, you'd be like that. Rub it into him, mate. Jesus no, no, Christ. I'm just saying. No, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying she's a horrible, a horrible vampire. That's I don't not, want to use I the words. I can't believe why. it. Well, but, we don't swear on this show. It's unbelievable. No, we, we don't use those sort of languages. But listen, mate, she's horrible. You've, you've dodged yeah, your bullet. Dude, you could do better. Because if it was George Clooney, you would probably shake his hand and say, listen, George, you're a, you're, you're you're a, you're a hell better of a man. guy. You're a better guy. You just move your way. But with him... Jason, he says they both aren't good looking. <laughs> well, mate, listen... It's supposed to be a Christmas <laughs> special. This is. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is not Jerry Springer, but. Um... Do you know though? One of the ideas we had for this show was that well, people Jerry write, write. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I was going to get. I was going to invite people to write in with like you know like dear Deirdre type things oh. and say dear dear Kev and like tell us their real real that life problems, sure. there real, real 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 life there problems. Real and then you problem. you give advice <laughs> dear Kevin some of the worst advice you've ever heard in your life I right. give you okay we'll advice. add that segment for the next show that is the next show dear Kevin segment dear Kevin anything you're struggling with obviously if anyone Kevin. if anyone who's watching Connor, now Kevin wants to Connor send in and yeah maybe help you a wee bit maybe just a little bit but uh, yeah if anyone wants to send in like a a dear Kevin in before the show. Cy and Kev will fix it, Rob Boyle says. Oh. I think I'm not no, too happy don't about that. that line. I know, I'm not, <laughs> so not too happy about that. Uh, no, we're not going there. No. Woo! So, um, let's have a look what else. We've got a few people saying. Uh, Michael Jones says, uh, good crack. Mm, free travel for me, Steve McMahon says. He says, eating's cheating. Gavin Randall says he doesn't drink much. That's why he goes with the travel, uh, with the food, Gavin brother. Randall. Gavin was the one who said, uh, no, he said paintballing instead of pedalo, didn't he? And you said, well, you would rather go paintballing instead of the pub. Then go to the pub. 
and Come he says now. it doesn't drink much, so why would he go to the pub? Oh, well. Can't and he also gave us an update from the Wolves, 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 Chelsea game, two one to Wolves. I've just got to put Wolves. Oh, fancy Wolves, fancy the Wolves. I can't lie. And uh, Michael Jones says, Kev, come on, mate. He's thinking of getting back with her. I don't know if he, I think he might be referring to Jason. I don't know. God knows. Um, He's thinking of getting back with I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm losing track. There's quite a lot of comments. Oh, Jamie, Jamie uh, Anderson says, Super Kev. Oh. Dear Kev in brackets. Hello. So it's the first Dear Kev. But he's he's, oh, he's been a bit know. sneaky because he's not asking for advice. What's he says, "Dear Kev, that? can you just wish my wife Natalie a happy thirty first birthday?" Natalie, have a fantastic thirty first birthday, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> 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 that wasn't creepy at all. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> And that with that with this behind me as well, <laughs> just the two eyes are glaring. Look into the eyes, not around the eyes, into the eyes. <laughs> but like we decided last on last on the last episode, it was um, was it smolder? The title of last time was episode oh, smolder, was smolder, smolder, but... smolder, or Scottish glare, and uh, it was we decided it was smolder. It was definitely smolder. Look. He's got the look. Got the so. Look. If you've got any questions or you want us to talk about a particular subject, send them in. If you have like a, a dear Kev where you would like us to give you real life advice, you can crack on. Um, be interested in what we will do. Oh, I had a would you rather. I, I thought this one while I was on the toilet the other day. Um, so it was a cracker. Would you rather, Kevin McNaughton, What's that? that Star Wars never existed like there was nothing to do with Star Wars it was never created no TV shows comics films nothing or would you rather the MCU never existed so no Marvel films no interconnected universe no end game no TV shows no nothing which one would you Marvel been off? or Star Wars I'm going to say Marvel Why? Why are you upset? It's Star Wars is nothing compared to Star Wars. To Marvel. Everything. I like Star Wars, but like compared to Marvel, but the, the MCU is I a know work you've of got genius. The old, yeah, there's a few good ones. Films. Films. But they started the thing. They, they started this. They started it. You so, could argue without Star Wars, there no. wouldn't have been an MCU because no, they were the all. first kind of interconnected universe. But Equally, the MCU is a work of genius, and I won't have a word said against it. MCU? The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Is that the name of it? See, see you're, you're a boffin. So you, you're, you're no impartial. I love it, I'm mate. impartial. Impartial. Steve says that's a strange thing to think about while you're on the toilet. Um, yeah, well, you know, sometimes I, my best ideas come from, uh, from there in the office. Oh, James, with, a, with an interesting one. Um, and I'm going to allow it, even though I said no more would you rathers. He says, James Costley says, would you rather have a, a brummy accent or chlamydia? Oof. I think I'd go for the right. brummy accent, I've got to be honest. I'm heading to the, the clinic, to be honest with you. <laughs> what are you doing? You're shuffling about there. I know, like, I'm just trying to fix my Taking floor. your trousers off. Spilt a drink, mate. I've just spilt a drink. Ah, oh, you spilt the goblet. Man, I just spilled a drink. Jeez. Yep. What's that, so, uh, what's that drawing behind you, the bottom one? This? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the this bottom one. one. It's like a flying bus. Right, this is my kids. So this is obviously takes pride of place in the house. Yeah, that's awesome. That is like Fortnite. That. Sorry, Fortnite. Ah, right. Okay. Got so that's you. the flying it's the bus, bus dropping in. Uh, it's the bus dropping in. Area. And this is from my daughter doing a rainbow with us involved in it. So I ah, see quality. So, so I'll tell you what you could do, there? Kev. You know those pictures you showed me just before yes. the show? Show the people those two like pictures and we'll decide which one looks more like you. We'll vote. Right, two seconds. Yeah, you're right, buddy. <clears throat> right, we're looking at uh, a couple of things up there. 
bad, badly done paninis. This is called. I bought these things online, badly drawn paninis. So you can decide which one is the worst. My Aberdeen one. I'm going to find it here for a second. I think. Uh, which one looks more like Kevin McNaughton? Can you see us there? Where are you? Ah, you just to go to the right a little bit or the left. This way. That's it. There he is, Kevin McNaughton. Woo! Beautiful. Was that you? Was that you in your peak? Was it in your prime? Oh, that's me in my prime. Now that's me in my plum. Just you got that one. Oh, we have this one, the Cardiff one, which I think is. Uh, yeah. Is so look, got the eyes down there, isn't he? Beautiful. He seems all right. And there's Kev McNaughton in a Cardiff City shirt. So which one of those do the people think looks more like Kev McNaughton? Right. There's Sorry. the vote. There's the vote. There's a vote for you. There's the vote, vote, vote. So, yeah, um, you mentioned, Kev, to me that you have a box of props next to you. Yes. Oh, Christ, um, we're going to get into them, are we? Yeah, oh, dig okay. into them. A couple of people <coughs> saying the Cardiff one's the best straight away. I'm not sure if they might be biased, though, I've got to be honest. They uh, you know, favour in the Cardiff City ones. Um, it's an interesting one, really. What is... Yeah, look, there we go. The goldy looking chain, that is, isn't it? There's well, all sorts of props there, guys. But uh, this think, is one. This is one that stood the test of time. This wee guy. <laughs> this one has stood the test of time. <laughs> the Captain Jack has always stood the test of time. You know. Wow. Well, that will always in, stand the test of time. He's been in the spot of bother lately. <laughs> has he? What's he been up yeah. to? <laughs> he was in court, wasn't he? For. Um, Battering his missus or something. Oh, I tell you Jesus. what. Jesus. So wrong with these celebrities, <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. A couple more of these, I tell you. Mm, he'd have the goblet. <coughs> right, I'll dig in again. See if I've got any more. <laughs> what else you got? Let's move along. Right, <laughs> oh, they are. Yeah, Craig says there, Kev. They are looking for a new Captain Jack Sparrow now, so. <laughs> maybe you oh, could be here. Uh, you could be it. The oh, Scottish, Scottish Captain Jack. I've got a Christmas one. Yeah, here we Christmas go. One. Now Christmas special. It's been a bit dark so far. You know, need to brighten things more, up. It's a bit more friendly, isn't it? Even though it's got there a wee bit There we go. It's, there we go. Oh, it's Christmas. Let's brighten this stuff up. Oh, I'm going the wrong way around, but here we go. My ears there are on the wrong way around, but... Elf. Elf-like. Right, there's one. Like it. Right, last... Oh, here we go. Last oh, one. I'll tell you what. I'll try and find the bees. Defamation. Oh, yeah, defamation case. It was. Uh, Matt Hall has just reliably informed me. Uh, it was a defamation case, which he lost. So they are looking for a new Captain Jack Sparrow, and it is Kevin McNaughton. I think that and we can all agree on. Reggie, reggie, sauce. So, Kev, yep. just while we're chit-chatting yep, and waiting, no waiting building up, got a um, little thing. So we're going to do a little off-the-cuff Magnificent Seven. Do you know okay, what the Magnificent Seven is? Yep. Like, oh, I like it. Magnificent Seven is seven quick-fire questions Oof, where you just answer the first thing. So I'm going to do this off the cuff. I yeah. haven't got him in front of me. I'm making yeah. him up as I go along. No worries. Um, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Why? Because he's brilliant. Ronaldo's better. Ronaldo's an athlete. Messi's a baller. I, I accept that. Um... Steve McPhail or Graham Kavanagh? I never played with Graham, so I'm going to say Steve. Because he's a mm. better. He, 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 Stephen once surfed me. He surfed you? He used me as a surfboard once. <laughs> what, in, the, in the sea? No, on the floor. Well, I just did a goal celebration, surfed you. No, he used me as a human surfboard once on a night out. Excellent. Yep. So there's he was, some trivia for you. He was not sure that one might come up in the pub quiz. Pub quiz. Which, which human being was used as a surfboard by Sam <laughs> McPhail after they won this championship? Quality. Um, how many questions have I done? Two. Uh, it's going to be quick fair. Come on. I know. Do it quick. Come on. Who is the come greatest Scotchman, Scotsman who's ever lived? Doesn't have to be football related. Oh, William Wallace. William Wallace. Is he um, Braveheart, is it? Freedom! Wrong film? No, same film. Ah, there we go. Um, 
angriest teammate? Angriest? Oh, is he playing golf? Andrew Taylor. Is he angry? He always oh, seems quite one quiet. One of the angriest human beings on the planet playing golf. Honestly. Laziest trainer. Laziest trainer. <sighs> That's a toughie. That's no quick firing. I need to think. Laziest Aber- trainer. Alright, I'll let you come back to that one. Aberdeen oh, or, or Aberdeen or Dundee. Like- what for? Whatever you want. Football, yes, it could well, be I'm, place. I'm Dundee, I brought the Dundee sport, so I have to say Dundee. Even though Dundee. I love Aberdeen. I love so Aberdeen. Who, was, who was the laziest, laziest trainer? Laziest trainer? Oh my God. Mm. So jet. many. Got to be so Jet, many. surely. Was he a lazy trainer? Nah, he was just a gangster. Just like a London gangster. He's a so, good footballer. Like He had the ability, didn't he? Yeah, I tell you what. Just, um, I wonder what he's more. doing now. Do you still play, do you reckon? Don't know. Someone, someone, knows? someone have a look. Lazy person. Lazy trainer. Lazy. I'm trying to think of. Really try to think. It's hard to get away with being lazy, eh? Mm. I had a guy called Leon Mike who pretended he had asthma for about 20 years. And he was really, really, really lazy. Well, he just didn't. Didn't. You, are you trying to say he didn't have answer? That uh, didn't have asthma? He didn't have asthma. That's unbelievable. He had. And, um, he had can't be asthma. <laughs> That's what he had. And then the final question is. Yep. Who is. Who is. The better striker? No, I won't say that. I'll say you can just choose Andy Campbell or Robert Earnshaw. Like, like it's, you're asking me I've tough seen, questions. I've always, I've obviously seen a lot of uh, Robert. Not seen Andy, but I've had a night. I've had a few drinks with Andy, so I've obviously got to go and lean towards Andy because I've had a few drinks with him. Yeah, I see. Andy, so I'm just going to say Andy. Thinking. Fuck you. Yeah, because if 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 you keep Robert on the pitch, the card have get promoted. There you mm. go. There's the kid on your face. Spot on. That is what you face. And okay. now we've got some questions coming in there now. Oh, but oh, Gavin something. Randall says Robert oh, Earnshaw Randall. over Andy. He says he says Earnshaw over Campbell. And then he follows it up by saying, please don't tell Andy. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, that's it. Don't I'm going to send this clip Robert. to Andy straight away. <laughs> Who said that? What's his name? Gav. Big Gav. Big Gav. Big Gav. Mm. Oof. In trouble. I'd like to be in your shoes next time you're on Andy's show. <laughs> James Costley says Michael Chopra or Jay Bothroyd? Chops. Oof, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Nope. Tough one, that is. It's really easy. Um, why? Because one's their natural striker and the other one's very good player, but it just doesn't. There you go. One enjoys burgers. You were like, yeah. Um, how can I say Here this? Here you go. Yeah, don't, go on. Don't Here quite go. know what I'm going to say. Continue. Continue. Uh, Jet, Continue. But Craig, Craig, being on the Google machine, and he says that Jet plays for Livingston now. So he's up uh, up Scotland way. Is Livingston near you? <laughs> I couldn't. I didn't think he's. I didn't think his career would improve from leaving Cardiff, but he's gone to Libby, to the Scottish. Oh. Where's that's Livingston Scot- compared to like, where that's in Scotland Scot- is it? I mean, that's the Scottish Arsenal. That's, um, is it? Is it up in the Highlands? Obviously, apart from the finances, but in, no, it's not. In high, Livingston is not it? far from Glasgow, mate. It's just outside. No, is it? So, yep. where is um, Livingston also? Uh, is where HMRC is based. No correlation. Um, where me. is. Where, well, what's like the furthest. Scottish football club towards the Highlands. The furthest for north. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's John O'Groats FC, obviously. <laughs> no, and, uh, Are they like oh, right up there? They, I, no, I geog- geography no. is not my, uh, not my strong point. So you've got Inverness, who is majorly north. They're the biggest team. They're the biggest team northish. So you've got Inverness. <laughs> Higher than that, you've no sorry, Inver- you've got is Ross that County. Inverness, you've got Caledonian Inverness, you've got, Thistle. Yes, 
Above that, you've got Ross County, who are another bigger club. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then you have teams like. <sighs> do I think? Nah, there's no many. Then then you've got higher league teams, which is doesn't really count. It's like saying non-league teams and stuff. Ah, oh, okay. Got you. Um, Matt Hall says, "Would you rather uh, prefer to play for Swansea City or Dundee United?" So is Dundee United. That's the other Dundee, is it? See, you need to start doing your research. Okay. You can't just wander in here with your Dundee United and Dundee's, yeah, okay? Just you half don't know what you're it. talking about. Don't half arse it. Dundee's a team. United are the enemy. Okay. Cardiff are the team. We don't like them. Swansea are the enemy. So I said. Okay. Which so enemy you're would you play me for? for my chi- play for your childhood enemies or play for your, your adopted enemy. adult enemies. Got to pick one, mate. That's like pick. asking me, would I play? For, who would you rather play for, Swansea or Liverpool? I'd rather. What team do you support? Cardiff City. Yeah, but Liverpool. I why was hate, that? I just hate them, mate, with a passion. They really why? grind my why? gears. I just, why? I just, because when I was why? little. What have they done to you? Because so when I was, did, when did I was they little, hurt you? did they yeah, hurt they did. you when you were little? They have hurt me a lot over the years. <laughs> when I was little. In primary school, like really little, like six, they used to be beanbags in the classroom. And then you come in from break time playing football, and everyone would run in and they'd say, "Oh, this is the Liverpool beanbag. This is the Man United beanbag. This is the this is the Nottingham Forest beanbag." And everyone used to sit on the Liverpool beanbag. And I was like, "I don't want to sit on the Liverpool beanbag. I'm going to sit on the Nottingham Forest beanbag." And it's just because I didn't like, I didn't want to be with everyone else. And then it kind of grew from there. And then. He it got it's got better over the years. They you know they it sounds they, like it's got better. They yeah, cheat. Right now, they right support now. racists. They they always seem to get the the benefit of VAR. It's it's never ending. But I say that like I don't like I don't I dislike Liverpool the football club a lot. But I have a lot of close personal friends who are diehard Liverpool fans. So it, I don't let it you know take over my life or anything. I just hate them with a passion. It sounds like it. They made, made me sad. Man. Well, I, it sounds quite bad, considering. I would have a wee game for Dundee United. <laughs> it's local. It's local, and I'd, uh, I'd, I'd play sh- crap. I'd really. <clears throat> it's the turn up with my knees on my head. It's like, yes, let's go. Come on. <clears throat> so, um,. Craig is doing some phenomenal research on uh, on the Google machine. He says, Jet, he only joined Livingston this year, but previous to that, he was playing in Thailand for uh, Pitt Ryong. Oh, uh, Pitt Ryong, yeah. Mm. I know. Yeah, I know top them. club, I, isn't he? Yeah, very familiar with what, them. Big, big fan of them over the years. Well, tell the thing what. is, you see wouldn't come in. See the result with uh, Taekwondo. That was a real... I thought that, we see when he drew with them. Five all. I did, yeah. Five all. I, I don't. I thought it was the quality of the defending. It was was what really stood out for me. Tell you what, that's when Jet shined. I thought. So. Well, the thing is, though, mate. So you said it's, you would never come into this show unprepared, half ass it, because that's not the sort of person you are. You're I knew they played. I knew you played for them. Yeah, you're just seeing if anyone else was willing to put the legwork well, in that you have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't push a boat like that. So. You know, you guys don't know your taekwondo's from your whole cantos. <laughs> uh, Reese David Evans says, "Quick fire question: Who is the best looking wife of a teammate?" Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can ask that. I think best looking wife. Hmm. I don't know. I you think? I need to this think be of the first question, have... you dog. No, uh, no, no, no. You dog. I will answer this. I need to think of somebody who I'm never going to come in contact with again. <laughs> Um, nah, I'm going to the best looking it. wife. Gonna skip it. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. That was you went oh, super Andreas, Scottish. Then. Andreas Meyer. <laughs> I thought you were going to say what's his head there. Um, Andreas Meyer. Who's the one with see, the? Because I'm never going to see that asshole again, and his <laughs> missus was beautiful, and she was only ten years younger than him, and she had massive, massive. Personality. Okay. <laughs> she I had a, 
one of the most perfect personalities you've ever seen in a young German girl. <clears throat> I am going to clip that. What? You're going to clip what? To, going to clip that massive one. Just, just German personality. Massive personality. And I'm going to clip that and I'm going to use that to promote our top quality professional show. Um, James Costley says, has Kev ever seen Bur- Burning... Burning Burniston, the Burniston. TV show. Oh, hundred yeah. percent, eh? cracking show. Quality, quality show. It's up there Netflix, between no. the fat. Up there, chewing the chewing fat. The fat. Wow, that chewing the fat, and um, Rabsy Nesbit. I used to love a bit of that when I was younger. Burniston's the same. Burniston's the same. Mm. Yeah, I've watched Burniston actually recently on Netflix, on the old Netflix machine. Is it on? Um, Burniston's not Netflix. It is, it is man. Maybe it's on the American one, but it's on there because I watched both. So. You're off your, you're, you're talking. Off nonsense. your rocker. You're talking nonsense. Rob Boyle is back. He's back in with a question. What this is a good Rob, one. Love, He's going to redeem Rob. himself. Love lesson, Rob. Come on, Rob. Big Rob Come Boyle on. says, "Do you have a favourite piece of memorabilia?" Uh, well, it's on my walls. The good stuff's on the walls. So. Come on, Kev. Which one? Oh, this thing. Is that a black shirt by there above you? Just by the yeah, that's just, kids' drawings. Yeah, yeah. the black you and yellow one. Do you one want to see one of the best? That is. Do you want to see one of the best rugby players I've ever played with? Here he goes. Here we go. Where is he? Where is he? Right. Tell me when you can see the best rugby player you've ever seen. Darcy Blake there. Gavin Ray. Big Gav Ray. He's been on the uh, channel. Can't fault him. Who's that? Hold on. I think Who's next to Jay you? Bothroyd there? Who's that? Someone tell me who that is. Can't you not see this guy? Oh, I remember the best rugby tackle you've ever seen. <laughs> At Cardiff City Stadium. Against Leicester. Hmm. He was beautiful, wasn't he? Sorry. Still game, yeah, it's a good show. Guy Gabo Gipes. Gipes, nah. that's the one. Good shout. What rugby player? The Craig, best uh, Craig Sullivan questions Don Cowie's wife. Was she was she pretty? I don't know. I still speak to her. I can't see a thing. So yeah. why <laughs> can't discuss that whatsoever? Um, Ian oh, Curtis know. says Kev is quietly getting pissed. Who can blame him? I don't think there's anything quiet about her. Um, I'm doing this loudly, mate. I'm doing this very loudly. Gavin is not happy that I criticise Liverpool whatsoever. You can't help it if they, you know, they cheat and they supported Luis Suarez. I, you know, what, do you want me, what do you want me to do? Guys, <sighs> good. I want an honest, honest let's opinions be, now. Let's Come on, let's have a serious like, conversation. I've just dug into my thing and I found a red. <laughs> Back to the this props. Is, this is this is this is a bit controversial. Oh, come on, mate. Boom. What are you thinking of this? It's red, though. And you, what you want to do is get some blue paint, uh, blue fabric thinking? paint. What are you thinking, guys? Get some thinking blue fabric sh- paint. Should I chuck this? Should I chuck this in a bin, or should I keep hold of it for memorabilia's sake? Burn it. Let's ask. Let's ask the people. It's that badge, mate. It's that badge. Let's ask the people. people. Say. It's that badge, mate. I can't handle it. Can you know? <laughs> Sorry. Bear with us. Bear with us. Come back. Jesus, that's hat and half, isn't it? Oh, sorry, it's wrong word. It's like um, a leprechaun hat, but in blue. Well, I've told you. I've got a props bench right there, so I just keep just diving like, in. It's professional, mate, didn't you? That's what you've got to say. Set so, um, watches. Selling watches. Did Gabo Reese um, saying yeah? Did Gabo Gipes just mm-hmm. turn up to every game in a in a taxi? How how would I know that? How would genuinely? I, well, I don't know. Hope hope he did. I like that story. I'm going to keep that going. Yes, I'm going to say yes. It was a Polish okay. taxi. Oh, okay, it was his brother's. It was, his, brother's, it was like his missus. No, I'm going to make up a story. It was his okay. missus' brother's sto- uh, taxi. Mm-hmm. And they sold it, it him. to their neighbours. No, 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 no. It was him that moulded his gum shield that he wore every game, and it was blessed by a Polish priest. His gum shield. 
15 times see. before a game. That's why the taxi had to go past the church on the way to the game. There you go. There's the story. Keep Perfect. that going. Um, Ian, Ian Curtis, this is a this is, uh, quality question. He says, um, what did the players think at the time about the red rebrand? Obviously, uh, they didn't get involved in it, but they knew the fans weren't happy, surely. Yeah, it was just... It's a bit of a weird one, no? No, it was a lot of circumstances. Could do anything about it. And then... For me, it was like our strongest year, so... Just hard it's to such a up. good team, didn't we? Yeah, at that really point. Good team. So you couldn't have fought the team. At the same time... It took the edge off, though, do you think? Oh, 100%. Eh? But you couldn't do anything about it. There was a lot of fads. I... I okay. I give a ticket to every now and again. The guy who's just cut my grass, mm. God rest his soul, mm. he's passed away now. He was. He said to me, I, I, I don't actually want to be here, but at the same time, I don't know if I'll ever see my team get in the Premier League, so that's what it meant to him. So it's hard. I, I, um, I stopped going. I did. I know, uh, I know you did that. It's hard. I told, I told this story before, I'm not going to tell it again, but um, I know people who fell out with people, like close friends who'd sat next to each other for like 25 years watching Cardiff and you should never fall out your mates just fall out. no you shouldn't but it was a it was very uh it was very like people were so hurt by it and I think people outside of football like people who don't follow football whether it's like a, a wife or a girlfriend what, they don't see what gets me it, do they? see what gets me about it there was no um, need for it Nah, it's just people value their own football club exactly the same, whether it's Real Madrid, Celtic, or anything else. But could you imagine Real Madrid or a Celtic going, no, no, by the way, we're just going to change some, our, our owner's going to come in here and change our sips to black. Celtic, no, do it, we're going to change our, our sips to change our sips to blue because that's it just right. So. Why should Carter be inferior? Why should why should not have a say about that? Why? Because we're apparently smaller. We just got it. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's exactly the same. It's, it should come to a vote. It should be. It should be cast upon a vote. Things like that. You know. Yeah, like, the, play, uh, the fans have got to be involved in that decision. Honest, I think, haven't they? Let's be honest. These are the people who go and buy things. This is the people who go and pay for strips. This is the people who. Why would why would the heritage that's been along with their fathers, the fathers before them, who see it as a rivalry, as a blue versus white, mm. as in a, I just I just can't see it. Any other club, a Celtic thing, green and white versus a blue. Hold on a minute, we're going to change the red. It's a misjudgment to say the least. It's a, one of the biggest misjudgments in football, I think. And at the end of the day. If you think about it clearly, if we'd have got promoted in them blue strips, he'd have been a hero. He would have yeah. been. A, he would have been. He would, yeah. he would have been an absolute legend of the football club. Eh? But spot on, mate. The, the the problem is now, the edge has always been taken, haven't it? He will. He will. That will never happen now. Um, yeah. No matter what he does in the future, it will never happen because he's he's fought against people, and that's the problem. Eh? Yeah, like people have. I know, like a lot of people have kind of forgiven him, because you well, know. you can forgive him and you can do this and that. But listen, if he'd have been the first chairman in charge of this football club and pumped the money he did into the club, and we'd been in blue, and we'd have won the league, would have been even more special. He'd have the he, no. It wouldn't be that. Would he would have the keys to the city. He'd have been. Oh God, gotcha. he'd have I'd had more be, wives offered to him than you. I tell you what, a couple more maybe, but. He would have had a good time of it. Nah, he would have. Let's be honest. Super chat from uh, from Gaz but, Cummins. But, right, I need says, to find uh, someone else in there. He said, if uh, if West Ham did that, I'd riot, bruv. And there you go. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and I think, like, most clubs looking from the outside, looking at what was going on at Cardiff, they were like, oh, if they did that at my club, we'd never accept it. But nah. Cardiff, it was so weird the way... It just seemed to happen so quickly. Yep. Um, they just were like, like it was like rebrand. This is the plan. The fans kicked off. They said, "All right, we're not doing it." And then they kind of 
said, oh, but if we don't do it, we're going to be in a lot of financial trouble. So every, right uh, a portion of the fan base was like, oh, well, then we'll have to do it. And then suddenly it was back on, it was done. And before you knew it, we had this BMAT badge and it was very strange um, the way it was all done. Um, was loads of lies. Big fat lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I, said, I find it difficult to put into words how I feel about it because it, it affected my relationship with Cardiff City like in terms of a fan to the club. Like yeah. forever it's been changed from what it was. Like, like I my you, my habits always, on a Saturday mate have changed now. I said I'm whereas, a Dundee fan, right? And we're, they're not great. We're really gritty football club. Mm. Well, it's still it's never changed my support for them. No. Whether we're in League One or we're in the bottom league, or we're in. But then it's weird that people, because of that situation. Suddenly, your team's in the best, the top flight club, and you're thinking, "This is not really my club, really anymore." Yeah. So, so, well, so. I um, <clears throat> when when we got promoted, I went to because <clears throat> like I I was in this position where I didn't I did, just didn't feel right, but I was like, "Well, no, I I've, I've been waiting for this all my life," um, and the Man United game particularly, I was like, "I I would have gone to this with my father. I used to watch Man United with my father when I was a kid before he died." And I was like. I should go to this game. Like, this is a massive game for me personally. Mm -hmm. Cardiff versus Man United in the Premier League. So I went and I just didn't, en I, I, it just, I didn't enjoy it. It felt really weird watching Cardiff, the home team, in red versus United, the away team in, I think they wore like navy blue or something. And it just didn't, didn't feel right. It, my relationship with Cardiff as a fan had changed. And then what happened then when I stopped going, is my habits changed on a Saturday. So instead of on a Saturday, like dropping the kids up to the in-laws and me and the missus getting ready to go and, and having a few beers and going to the football, I was doing something else. <laughs> and once your habits change, like it's, di it's different then, isn't it? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, And I know people who are in exactly the same boat. Like they used to go every Saturday without fail. They'd be out all day. And then when they stopped going, they... You know, they were doing other stuff. They were doing work around their house or their garden or they were meeting up with a different set of people. And it's a tricky one. A um, yep. couple of questions on that. And I know it's difficult. Like, it's difficult for you. Obviously, you were, you know, you were, as far as you were concerned at the time, you were just looking at the football side of it. And, you know, you just wanted to do, you wanted to get to the Premier That's League and you wanted to get promoted. But it's it's got to have been difficult for the players. Was there any players like who were like particularly outspoken about it? Like whether for or against or were like, no, well, what's all the fuss about? No, 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 not at all. There was nothing, was nothing major at all. We just, they were talking about the start of the season and it was like, it was like, oh, it's, it's no book finance, we're just having a good, I think we talk about loads of finances coming in. If we turned mm. to red, we did this. And we were just like, it's not about the finances, it's about getting a good squad together that's going to be able to challenge. Mm. And then he, he went, he, I think he said he wasn't going to do it. And then next thing he was. So it was, it was, it was tough on that part. Eh? You, it just became hard when you were on, when you were wearing those red strips. It was, it was like a, almost a, it was, it was like a piss take to, well, it wasn't a piss take to the fans it was like a it was a rebellion to the fans some embraced it some didn't they <clears throat> yeah. but the people who embraced it it was almost like emotional blackmail wasn't it because when they first said no we're not going to do it because the fans had complained they kind of put out this weird statement of like or you know if we don't go to red it's, there's going to be uh, a lot of financial problems like you like you're only yeah, gonna put no. the money in. Only gonna put the money in if you go if, red. And if we get we like, yeah. it just I didn't like that part of it. Michael Darch, he uh, says, staying with the red era. What were your thoughts on Oli Gunnar Solskjaer? Did you ever think he would go on to manage Manchester United? Did ever think he would go on to manage another football club? Was he as tactically clueless as I think he was? 
It's just really. Oh, listen, I I find them really awkward to deal with. I don't don't rate. I never really rated them as a, as a tactical manager. Mm. It was um, it was hard. I found them hard work. Really, he he told me to start this. Like I I signed the new deal, uh, a year deal. But he went. He, all he said to me was, "Oh, you're in the same pro. You're you're." And he he said it to me while I was in the gym. So I'm, imagine me just bench pressing or something like that. Like a, mm. Massive bench pressing. Like, oh, 110 kgs, and I'm just like, whoa, 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 sorry, mate, 100. Mm. He's like, um, yeah, you're in the same position as last year. Bolton have come in for loan for you. So you might as well do what you need to do. If you need to do that, it's fine. We, we won't stand in your way. I was like, uh, we did this in the gym, mate. Eh? Could have mm. done it in his office, could have. Yeah. Like, chat, but, do it, like, treat me no, like a professional. Is, not even that. It was just like, just thought myself, this is, I don't know what to be around this place if it's going to be like this. Yeah. So, I left and it never worked out for us. If I just did, if I said, a genuine, this is no doubt, I said to Major, I said, he'll not be here for much longer. Mm. Before I left alone, I said, he'll not be here for much longer. And he was gone within, I think, two or three months of the season starting that year. Yeah. I'd say. Just, he wasn't good enough. Now he's in charge of the best team in the world, so... Well, the he's biggest shown, team in the world. shown glimpses that he might have, so he might know what he's doing, but not very many, I've got to be honest. Um, just kind of lastly on the rebrand, um, I am interested in... Like, it sounds like that era, like, obviously, you had this successful period for, you, like, the team, and although they yep. didn't quite make it to the Premier League before that, but you had an incredible squad. And it sounds like there was a point where a lot of things changed behind the scenes. Some players left, like yourself, and, and it sounds like it became, it went from quite a positive, happy place where everyone was quite close and close-knit behind the scenes, not just the players, yeah. but the families of the players and everything. And then it sounds like it became a bit kind of almost like disjointed off the pitch and a bit cold. I don't know if that's a fair assessment, but it does sound like it changed a lot. What what was the point where it changed, I suppose I'm asking? And how did it change? That would be a great squad, but a good squad that got promoted um, was not, wasn't our fault that Everything in terms of colour changed. That we, if you could imagine us in blue, nothing would have been the same in terms of our approach to football games. So, mm. um, yeah, it was weird. It was um, obviously Malky was there. He had a certain way of doing things, which is fine. And then he, um, he's then all he, he was, he was, he got sacked too quickly in my eyes. Even though I, I, I never ever. I struggle with Malky a wee bit, as I've told you before and stuff like that. But realistically, for the good of the team, probably keeping him in there, maybe to the end of the season, he might have kept us out of trouble. The problem was he uh, Oli Oli come in and just went right. We're going to play for the back. You need to start playing. You need to start playing. You need to start playing. Play. It's like well, we've got a team that's done. We've got a team that's been successful for the last two years, and I tell you what, we've never played football. We never just drew the. You look at a team that got promoted that season. Do you think we ever really played attractive football? And you went, oh wow, what mm. a footballing team! You never. You went. They've got a solid back four. They've got a couple of boys up front who do a bit. They've got a couple of midfielders who do a bit for them. They've got attacking midfielders and doing a bad. I just thought yeah, they fight off things. They, and they're just doing off. They're doing off to win games. They've got yeah. enough about them. And that was our. That should have been our approach to the Premier League. But after Malky went, it was uh, Solskjaer came in. And he went. We're going to start playing for the back. We're going to start doing this. I was like, Phew. as soon as he started saying that, I said, he's got he's got the wrong players to do that. So well, n- this is it, isn't it? Like I talked to Andy a lot on the Championship show about playing 
you got to play the formation and tactics that suit the players you've got, not what you, well, not what your vision of football is. Especially if you come in mid-season. No, but it's an ego thing. That's an ego thing. That's an mm. absolute ego thing. Do you imagine? I'm going to come in here. I'm going to, yeah, right. You You're going to need teach to, all these you players need how to, to play. do. I'm going to teach you guys how to do it my way. Hold yeah. on a minute. There's 30 people in the squad there. Why don't you look at what's going on there and think, you know what, this this suits what we've got. And I'll, I'll tinker it in my own style. Yeah. In a way that suits everybody in the squad. But... There's, oh, the, the, I've met oh, every manager that I've known that has been sacked has come in with that routine. They say, this is how we do it and this is how things are done. Yeah. And it, it never works. It never, ever works. You need to come into a squad and you go, where are we strong? Midfield. We'll put, we'll play with three in there then. Hmm. Where are we weak? Out wide. Might play a three five two then. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's like it's just this this it's no rock it's no rocket science, it's no bit like But you think Pep Guardiola that gets like the, the the big spiel about oh he does well, he does all this he doesn't do a lot in the same pitch, he's got good footballers who yeah. know how to play the positions then and then he tell he gives them instructions and it's just. Do you think, think that's why so many managers struggle because they overcomplicate it? It's just an ego. A lot of things are ego. It's, uh, I find a lot of things, especially at young football, is it's ego where they want to just go pass, pass, pass. Yeah. Pass. So, go on. I was just yeah. going to say, um, before we go on to the top 10 Christmas films of all time, oh, we, yeah. um, a couple of more questions. Um, just sort of kind of fo- finishing off on this subject. Uh, Michael Darch asks a question, which I'll get to now. But I wanted to say, um, whatever you think of like Malky Mackay and the way he left, and maybe the way he treated certain players, and maybe I'd include you in that, Like he was never in the bottom three in the Premier League. We never looked no. like we were going to get relegated under Malky. Um Yes, it was not always exciting football, but we never looked like relegation fodder. As um, soon as he went, we always looked like going down. Yep. The Any togetherness that was still there from the championship was gone very quickly. And ultimately, I think the uh, people in charge have got to take responsibility for that because that's, in my opinion, what's cost us promo- uh, relegation. Um Michael Dard says, do you think we would have stayed up in the Premier League if the whole thing with Malky and the owner hadn't happened and Malky had carried on till the end of the season? No, I think it would have been closer. Whether yeah. we stayed up or not. Long way to go, isn't there? From yeah, Christmas 100%. To... It, was hard to, it would have been a lot closer, but whether we'd have stayed up, I don't know. No 100% sure. Not 100% sure. Yeah, it's it's difficult, isn't it? There's a long way to go. Gav, Gav, big Gav says uh, it was wrong when you left, Kev. You deserved much more. A bluebird legend, and uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think we've said that before, haven't we? That with that, um, the way you were treated on your way out, I think was not acceptable. But then you said, like you know, it's just the way football is, isn't it? It's, they move players it's football, in, yeah. move players on. Footballers come in and out all the time, yeah. Ian Curtis says, who was the best manager you ever worked under Cardiff, as, uh, at Cardiff? Uh, at Cardiff? Mm. <sighs> they were all very, very different. Um, Dave was one of these guys who just recruited the squad, in, just try to get them all together and try to get them really tight-knit, uh, etc. Uh, Malky was more authoritarianism. Uh, Ollie was... Only had his own players, and he just tried to he tried to do his own thing, which mm. I, I I found hard. I, I didn't I didn't enjoy that spell, but even with Malky, I didn't really enjoy the spell. But at the same time, kind of knew where I was in that squad and stuff like that. So yeah, it was hard. It was always quite hard. Uh, Craig Sullivan says, if uh, Sam Man had had his way, we'd have been green and moved to Dublin. <laughs> um, that was a rumour at one point and uh, Jason Jones to finish us off with this says uh, what's the craziest thing you did 
with the players whilst at Cardiff. And I think, before you answer that, we should take out the fire extinguisher story because we've already heard that one. Okay, the craziest thing I've ever done. Yeah, with the players. With the players. Um, going back a few years, huh? Mm, memory's not what it was. I don't know, really. Um, with players. Pressure's on now, isn't it? Yeah. Dum, 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 dum. Can I come dum, back dum. to that? Yeah, we'll come back to that. Yes, um, I will do. Tom, Thomas Whitelock says, uh, what was your favourite moment at Ninian Park? Just the first few games. First few was games were quite the experience, was it? That was brilliant. I loved it. I couldn't, I'd not experienced anything like it. I think it was West Brom, we played Birmingham, and we weren't fancy for the league, and we think we won and drew. So at that time, it was like, and the, the, that for me, the atmosphere was unbelievable. I was like, I've not experienced this. Even at Aberdeen. Aberdeen was a good club, but at the same time, I never experienced that sort of level of, you know, fan anticipation, I would say. Yeah, yeah I think um, it was a special place. And it's, I get I get emotional when I think of, like, not being able to go there and play and watch them play anymore is no. it's I'm quite, quite upsetting, mate. I've got to be honest. So you know, thanks to uh, Thomas for bringing that up, bringing, yeah, the, no, cheers, bringing the Christmas special down. <laughs> but because uh, you know it's been so chirpy so far, <laughs> some of the stuff's been tremendous. Um, oh, is it? This is you know on the the light-hearted note. Ian Curtis says. Uh, what did uh, Kev, Mc- Kev think of the whole investigation uh, the owner started into Malky? Um, there was talk of it being passed about tra- about transfers and the racism thing. Did the boys kind of like, or the team, have any kind of opinions on that, about the way it was gone about and all that sort of stuff? Or was it kind of just like, is what it is? That was dealt with without the... Really, the boys. I think general consensus was that the, um, that there's a lot of stuff in there that that might have gone on in a group chat. That uh, I don't know. There was no given. I'm not saying that anything that was remotely sort of acceptable but at yeah. the same time it was a lot of stuff in there was tongue in cheek mm. so I think that was said but at the same time we kind of we knew that that was well, that was that was right yeah um, Gavin asked this he asked this a couple of times and I think I missed it last time he says do you know uh, Big Paul he wears a kilt to every game with I've a sheep a on the guy, front yeah. uh, sheep a on the guy. front for good a good chance you might know him. Uh, I think it's Gavin's uncle, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen, I've, I'm sure I've seen him. I've seen him. A lot of times, um, to be honest And like Ian says, uh, he says, you know, uh, Mr. Tan was uh, he was looking for something to sack Malky for at the end of the day, and I think that's what it came down to. Um, it was just they needed to, a way to get him out, so they looked at his his work mm-hmm. phone and they found, you know, group stuff from the group so chat. Things that didn't like. Anyway, yeah. So it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I guarantee, like, um, if most people were honest with you know, if you if you had people go through your group chat, um, you know, group chat with your mates or whatever, there may be <laughs> some like tongue in cheek stuff which you wouldn't oh, want the rest of the world wouldn't want the rest of the world. Um, you know, this is what it is, isn't it? It's you know. Friends, that. friends have a bit of banter back and forth, and they take the mech out of each other. Definitely, which you wouldn't necessarily want to share with the world. Is where it is, I guess. Um, right, let's finish us off then, mate. Let's bring this tone up. Come on, it's Christmas. Everyone Come on, just it's Christmas. Cheer up. And we're going to finish Come with on. Kev's. Kev's going to sing us a song again, like he did last week. Christmas time, care for the temple. Sorry. Sorry, Mitch, you're just warming up and you're getting ready. Getting ready, Sorry, getting I, ready, I, getting I ready. Oh, 
won't be called the Nerf after this Christmas. Right then, people in the chat, Go we in. are going to decide in the next sort of 15 minutes or so, we're going to decide our top 10 Christmas top films 10. of are all we time. Doing it? As in, number one's getting penciled in, number two's getting penciled in. Well, we'll do our usual format. We'll say the ones where they, you know, they are in the Definitely top 10. Coming. And then we'll put them in some sort Definitely of order. Definitely coming in there. Um, but what I will say, to be clear, this is oh, okay. the Cy and Kevin kind of, this is what we think are the best Christmas films of all time. No, not necessarily, because people will moan, is not necessarily like the greatest films of all time. No, mate, these are, are our, great. yeah, these are our go-to, care, go-to films. Fuck them. Christmas top 10. Oh, mate, he's off. Wrong. He is off. Right now, I'm going to draw a caricature. Yeah, draw us a super, super Kev unscripted logo, mate. Come on. No, I'm drawing a caricature of you. Uh, yeah. yeah, me and you together. And we'll turn okay. it into a logo, innit? Come on. Okay. Right, Home Alone. Got to be in the top ten, I'm in it. Yeah? Agreed, everyone? 100%. Good. Home Alone. Die Hard 2. Got to be in there, surely. Hi. Die Hard 2. What about... Where do you stand on Elf, mate? Yeah. Absolutely got to be Absolute in there. So that's three films absolutely. straight away got to be in absolutely. there. Absolutely. Uh, let's have a look what else we got. Oh, Karen Karen Oakton says, oh, it's Kevin McNaughton. She's a bit late to the party. Be here Karen, hours. So Karen. Karen, he's well into his gin. And we are now deciding the top ten best Christmas films of all time. Um, at the moment, we're just putting in the ones which uh, Ian Curtis says Grinch. Is that a definite? Uh, Ooh, the, origi- yeah. the original or the new one? That's the thing. Yeah, I've seen a wee good diddle you there. A very drunk diddle. Yeah, I like it's it. Not good enough, it's not good enough, Beautiful. good enough, is it? Come on. Up your game. I know, I need to help you. Elf. Good shout, Karen. Excellent. Good shout. No, what's the best ever? Right, Grinch. Discuss. Original or the, like the one that came out last year or whatever it was? What do you mean the original? What was the original? Well, there, there was one out with like Jim Kay, like a live action one, wasn't there? Yeah. And then live didn't they make good? Oh, I like then the they made a new ones. one nah, which was action. come out nah. recently. Fuck Am I imagining that? No, I'm Fuck sure there's. Fuck the animated one, Grinch. Yeah. Real one. Yeah, 2018. There was a Grinch. Yeah. With the, nah. the Grinch 2000 Grinch, old school Face. Grinch, isn't it? Old school faces, real faces. So, all right, OG Grinch, uh, the big man, Big Alan Jones in the in the in the live chat. He says thanks for the representation, Big Kev, top man, because he's Kevin's repping the old away day apparel go, tonight in the Cardiff City go. colours. Got the uh, guns going, as well, mate. I've got the biceps yeah, there if well, you want to see. Calm now, bad calm. Boys as well. Look at them bad boys. After you've got after you got your after you got your special. I reckon that's it. Your tattoo art machine. out. I reckon the two A's look the same size as my. Guns. I think it should be two arms from the one that. Well, the thing is, mate. After um, after last episode when you showed us your special tattoo. Yes, mate. It's it's vital that you keep your clothes on, um, <clears throat> but also, you can buy away day apparel club colours t shirts at awaydayapparel.co.uk and if you see use, when you wear them, your arms you grow can, bigger. That's it. They make you look buff. And you can also use the code AA Podcast Nation and get ten percent off your orders. Um, but they do; they got loads. Of, they got like a Clockwork Orange inspired one. They've got um, a Stone Roses kind of inspired one. Uh, they got a shopping spree one. There's some classics on there. Real good stuff. Real nice. So I urge you to get it. So we got some more suggestions. What have you got? Um, what have you got? got for us? Craig. Craig says uh, Bad Santa. I've got on the list. Bad Santa, I'll add, okay, I'll add that to the, but I'm I've not sure it if it's a definite, life. mate. Not sure if that's a definite yet. So you I'm going to put that just below. We'll get there. You shut your mouth if you know it's oh, good for you, buddy. Stop the press. Rob Boyle's list is in. We'll discuss this in a minute. Is it right? Uh, no, Karen, just slow, slow down now. Bit. Slow down. Stop slow down. everything and we'll just need to listen to Rob's. And off the back of that, we will destroy everything. him. We can laugh, <laughs> we can... We can cry. <laughs> There's a lot of emotions that can come from Bob's stuff. Come on. Oh, what first, you got gl- first glance, mate, it looks good. But as it good, as it's he looks good for has him. He, has he Googled but it? 
he has left out a couple of like ones which have to be has on he there, googled so. it or has he gone with his heart i think he's gone with his head because he's left yes. out a couple of classics but we'll get there karen says polar express i like that i like that karen karen steve big I'll steve love it, big love, steve. it. Love, love it big steve mcmahon says it's a wonderful life steve hold on a minute can we just how old is steve Hold on a minute. Can I just uh, send this yeah, to Steve? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, on two on. seconds. He also suggested Gremlins. I'm not sure I'm having that as a Christmas film. Can you just... Sorry, if you just send this... Hold on. So what was that? I can't can see. you send that? Can I send it to him? I think you just... Can you... Up. Steve, Oh, you it? it's gone all X-rated. All in. It's a picture of my face next to it as well. There you are, Beautiful. Man. You're looking good. Beautiful. I want that piece of paper. I want you to sign that, and I want you to send it to me in the post. Okay, mate. I need to get so your friend. Frame, uh, frame it. I, I think I'm you... still waiting for a logo, mate. For mate, the, and super oh, for care for unscripted. I don't know, mate. I'm not a fucking graphic designer. Kev is, Kev is getting all het up now, aren't you? Um, <laughs> right, so I'll tell you what, you're looking well, though. Oh Jesus! I look smackhead in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Have you What's seen three at the top? Oh, it's your list, is it? Oh, it's my oh, it's my Christmas list, mate. Uh, I want it. I want that piece of paper signed and sent to me in the post. Oh, you're done. And I'll give it away as a as a prize. Right, Rob Boyle has sent in his list. Yes, is he, Robbie. Is he is he going to get mocked like he has the last two episodes because he's terrible? He taste. will. Don't worry about. Or will he redeem himself? The pressure's will on. Will he fuck? So he says. Rob Boyle says. No particular order. The Polar Express, The Grinch, the original, Elf, The Christmas Chronicles 1 and 2, Christmas The, Night the, Chronicles. <laughs> the Nightmare what Before the Christmas, fuck? and The Muppets Christmas Carol. Fuck that as well. No they, Die Hard 2 on there. Right. Any He's, Christmas list that doesn't have Die Hard 2 on there. This guy loves animation. What was it? Christmas Christmas Chronicles? Christmas Chronicles is good, actually. I've only seen the first one. I haven't watched the second it, one yet. It's not a fucking real Christmas film. It is. It's not It's not animated, is it? It's a live-action Netflix There's special. better out there. <laughs> We're looking for the, ten of the best. The We're vein, looking for random vein. Christmas Chronicles. He's the rage and the ve the vein is pulsing above your eye eyebrow now. Right, is angry. Give me a real one. Come on, you give me a real one. I'll give you a better one. Gavin Randall says, "Herbie goes bananas." Herbie, you shove those bananas so far <laughs> up your ass, Gavin, that you I can fucking hear I need... <laughs> the haul and go <laughs> of your right. shape pick. I need Wait, to get. Do you know what I need, Kev? I need a bleep button for when we get towards the last part okay. of the show. Bleep, bleep, when, you, when, bleep. You, <laughs> when you get a bit, a bit, uh, right, go. a bit there testy. Right. Jingle right. all the way, Michael Wallace says. Fuck it, not shite. Right, I'm being really Come harsh. On. I'm going to be one of the harshest critics right now. The X-rated Simon Cowell. Come on. I Gavin Randall says, "Last Christmas." I don't even know what that is. Gav Randall should shut his post right next. <laughs> Rob Boyle says the snowman. Fuck Rob Boyle. <laughs> Rob Boyle should never, ever open his fucking mouth again. Right, next. <laughs> Come on. Keep him going. It's a really well round. Come on. Let's go quicker. Quicker. <laughs> Rob, ejected. Never to speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> you broke me. <laughs> right, come on. Let's right, go. Nash, uh, James Costley says National Lampoons. Christmas Vacation? <laughs> Did he say National Lampoons Christmas Vacation? He just said National Lampoons. Doesn't specify. Well, who's that? Yeah, what James Costley. James, <laughs> James Costley, you have earned a reprieve because I've got that film on my list as well. Oh, you motherfucker. Uh, Ian Curtis said, what is he swigging from in that glass? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's Rob Jones' tears, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> uh, G 
Gav says, uh, Santa Claus the movie. 100% Gav. Gav, I love you. I love you, mate. So, some people are asking for that piece of paper, which I've already said you're going to sign, so, <laughs> sign oh, sorry. and send oh, sorry. to me. Yeah, I've only got one piece. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to sign yeah. it, send it to me, and then I will give it away as a prize, because everyone wants that, doesn't they? <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> Is this basically... Can you just look a wee bit closer to the, the camera, please, Sai? Just to, just to show how close that is to your face. Just missing really, my, um, really close. Just missing really my, my broken teeth and grey yep. hairs. That is going to be no... I want it signed, mate. I want it signed right now. Oh, dear. It's Christmas. I think you've shocked some people with your language, Super Kev. I'm just <clears> being <throat> honest. I'm just being honest with yeah. these. Yeah... Lethal really? Weapon 1. Oh, go away. That's that, I love Lethal Weapon 1, but that is not a Christmas film. I no, can't be having this. Dire, dire, what is wrong dire. with these people? What's going on with you guys tonight? Uh, Jason Jones says I could watch Kevin abuse Rob all night. <laughs> Rob says you're horrible bastard. Um, Gavin says, Kevin, you're class. Uh, all right, James said he did say Christmas Vacation the first time, National Lam Lampoon Christmas yes. Vacation when he wrote it earlier. Fred Claus, that's a shout, that's a bit of a left field one. That's what I think <clears> of that. Fred Claus, who the hell? Right, come on. I'm right, not... come on, serious this is, Kev, come on. This is serious, great. Right. Serious stuff. Come on now. What James Costley thinking? says, how about planes, trains and automobiles? Kevin... I'm... Kevin Corden. 100% gone on my list. There you go. Tick that box. Oh, what's his name? Sam Cowell. Kevin Cowell. That's what we'll call you. National mm. Lampoons. Christmas vacation. Boom. It's on there. Rob Boyle says, what I think got? I deserve Elf. one after the abuse. Elf. On there. Right, tell me your list. Go on, you tell me your list and we'll see where we are. Well, there's got to be one. Kevin! Home Alone. Home Alone. That's in. This has Check. not been mentioned. This Scrooge. What a Christmas film. Scrooged. Not not uh, Scrooge. Scrooged. Scrooge. Yeah? Yes. With uh, with Bill Murray. Oh, Is that the one, one of the best. One of the best. Yeah, I'll give That's you that it. one. I like that one. You, I like what, it. Do you mean you give me that one? That is I'll give a you fucking that certainty. That is a top five. Oof, I don't know about that. Santa it's, it's Claus the movie. Yeah. That will never be in. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Boom. No, I've, I've never seen it. Bring it. How, never, how you, I've never watched one how, how National Lampoon. How do you switch Lampoon. off a live feed? How do you switch off a live feed? Only I can um, do it. Okay. Did you know... I didn't so, know. I love a parody, no. and I love like spoof comedy and that, okay. like all different ones I like, uh, Yeah. But I've never cool. watched any of the National Lampoons. It's weird, isn't it? Right, we can't be right, sensible. my alley as well. Right, we can't be sensible. <laughs> right, Bad Elf. Bad, no, sorry, Bad Elf. Fucking hell. Bad Santa. Bad Santa. I just put it on there as a... As a An as adult a, one. It's a bit of a... It's different, isn't it? No, it's a bit of a conversation starter. Oh, okay. What do you think? Well, it's a good one, but I, I, what I like about it is it's different. Like, it's not... Like, Christmas films have a very kind of... You start, you get introduced to the characters. Yeah, some of the Something, goes, something goes wrong and risks Christmas. I know. And then, you know, it all comes together nicely, and then... You're not really... Really, really happy Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I like Bad Santa because it's more geared for, you know, adults and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, I've never seen Ian Dastiff. I've seriously never seen... National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I haven't, um, but I am going to watch it this Christmas. Good luck. Um, so, let's have a go then. Right, last couple of... Uh, anyone got any more suggestions for the top nope. ten Christmas films I, uh, of all time before we finalise the what list? What are you thinking about Gremlins? Piss off, man. Gremlins is not a Christmas film, and you can quite frankly, piss right off. Not having that at all. Not even a little bit. I'd rather have Gladiator in there. Gladiator. Who the hell said Gladiator for a Christmas film? Indiana film? Jones. What? Temple of Doom. No, you're being silly now. 
you're not going to take this seriously, then what's the point? Gremlins. Gremlins. Gremlins is not a Christmas film. How is it? Like, explain to me, how is it a Christmas film? Because why would Die Hard be the same Christmas film? Because it's the same time of year. It comes out, everybody loves it. But in, in like, Die Hard, he mate, says will, it's Merry fucking May I'll send your thunge out. Uh, so I'm going to throw a couple at you, and you can just give it a yes or a no. Okay, come on then. A Christmas story. What kind of story is it? Is it a it's horror? just called Maybe. a Christmas story. Better be a good one. Uh, a Wonderful Life. I think someone suggested nope. that Shite. one, didn't they? Uh, push. push. Charlie push. Brown, A Christmas animation. Charlie fucking Brown. Come on, then. let's go on. Come on, keep going. Uh, Polo Express. That's a good one. Polo Express, I'll give that. Think hasn't I'll... been meant. This one hasn't been mentioned yet. What? Oh, Home man. Alone 2. Nah. Lost in New York. No. Oof, that's harsh. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But not having that. It's rubbish. Nah, I was even Night- saying those. Nightmare Before Christmas. Nope. Not having that, are you? Tim Burton. <clears throat> so, Fishman. yeah. Right. But that's that. <clears throat> so, in my opinion, the greatest Christmas film of all time is Elf. So this is my list. Elf is number one. Die Hard 2, number two. Home Alone is three. Uh, The Grinch, a four. Christmas Chronicles, one, five. Christmas Chronicles. Uh, Then I'd have... Ooh, it's tough. I'd have um, Scrooged. Scrooged. Um, there was one. Oh, there you are. Jack Frost. It's a good one. With um, Michael Keaton in. You having that? Somebody told me the the dad died. Okay. I, I don't know. I just got told the dad died and it was really scary. And I went, who needs to hear about their dad dying on Christmas? That's, it, that's, that's all I said, and I went. Mm. Oh, I love Christmas. Mm. I don't want to, Merry Christmas. Love you. Uh, Rob Boyle says a size got good taste. At least he is correct. All right, a fucking phenomenal elbow. taste. Mate, that is not a compliment. You realise that? <laughs> it's like fucking said. <laughs> you like killing whales? Um, I'm having jingle all the way. Um, in my uh, in my list. Well. Um, well then, indeed. So I've got Elf, Die Hard 2, Home Alone, The Grinch, Christmas Chronicles, Scrooge, Jingle All The Way, Bad Santa, and... Where are you um, going? What was it called? Not Christmas Carol. Jingle Tits. what it was. Jingle Tits. That's a, that's a different <laughs> type of Christmas film. Um, <coughs> Polar, the Polar Express. Um, so they're my top ones. Mm-hmm. So what you got? Which, which ones we t- are we removing for the final list? Yep. So, Elf, Die Hard 2, Home Alone, Grinch, OG Grinch, um, Christmas Chronicles, Scrooged, Jingle Christmas All the Way, Chronicles, can Bad GTF Santa, and... Right now, get that shit fuck. Oliver Twist, Ian says. Who the... What, Oliver Twist? When has yeah. that ever been a Christmas fucking thing? Of course it is. Right, Jing- get that. Jingle right, start again. <laughs> Home Alone. Move, move your glass out your face. Oh, sorry. It's home locked. Alone. <laughs> right, Scrooge. Home Alone's in. Scrooge Scrooge's in. in. Yeah. Santa Claus movie's in. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation's in. No, okay. No, Elf is in. Die Hard's in. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on. How many is that? Uh, Don't know. National Six. Lampoon's, eh? So yep. we got... Um, right. Home Alone. Screws. In no particular order. Same again. Sorry, mate. Home Alone. Yeah. Screws. Yeah. Santa Claus movie. Yeah. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Elf. Mm. Die yeah. Hard. That's, I'm going to say five. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Six. And we need four more. So you got the Grinch, the original. Grinch, the original. Seven. I think. Uh, Polar. I'm, I'm, I'm teetering Polar on Polar Express. I'm teetering on Polar Express. Really oh, up. what about this for a shout from Craig Sullivan? What's that? Miracle on 34th Street. Fuck that. Oh, you grumpy bastard. That is that. a Christmas Take classic. It because it's full of Christmas cheer. No, it's, it's full, full of, of happiness. It's just so, so Christmas. Cheesy. Happy people just who want to wanna celebrate. Who uh, want to enjoy Ian yourself. also says Indiana Jones. People are saying Indiana Jones. That's what I said. I not said not Indiana Jones. How is that a Christmas film? Explain because to me. Because you remember. Oh, uh, Liamma. Oh, Liamma. You know the one where they've got the, the, the mad thing and they're all mm -hmm. swaying about like that oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. and then he takes the things puts them in the bag and he heads off and that was oh what a what a Christmas tale that was <laughs> real Six, Christmas three, tale four, five, six, seven. we only need three more jingle all the way in or out never ever ever speak to me if you put jingle on the way in there <laughs> right uh, Christmas Chronicles, you said you don't want that one in. I never want to hear the word Christmas Chronicles ever again. Because that's the worst Christmas worst Chronicles. Worst Christmas film ever. Christmas Chronicles. Bad Wait, Santa. Okay. It's a wild card. We can't yeah. put it in just now. Wait, just wait that's, for that. That's Polar, for Polar, Polar Express. Yeah, I think we need to get enough. Two more. Two more Christmas films to the list to go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to flick through the comments now karen says jingle tits and she found that very funny i thought it was quite funny as well jingle tits jingle the big man tits, jingle big tits, al rock. says step brothers is that a christmas film I'm not step sure about that ow stay off the eggnog you fucking big bam you need to watch that's never been a christmas oh film. i've got a couple of classics straight in oh have you know uh reese david evans die hard one we've already had that one reese david evans <laughs> James Costley says, uh, "Deck the halls." I'll That's deck your fucking the halls with fists of power. Anyone I shite. <laughs> in fairness, deck the halls is a good one. I like that. With a That's Christmas never lights, been a film and it's lights. Deck the fucking halls. Yeah, it is. It's the one with Danny DeVito and, oh, and um, the with the lights, and they have the big war with the lights, don't they? And he's got his house covered in in lights I and all that sort of stuff. That is a big bag of shite. Okay. One, yep. two, three, four, five. Let's go. Six, seven, uh, the big man says, uh, Muppet Christmas Carols. No, the big man needs to fucking shut his puss. <laughs> there you go. He's all over the place tonight. Um, we need two more, mate. Come on. Come on. Two Polar good Express. It's Polar Express. Yeah, he got Polar Express. Indiana. You didn't like Indiana Jones. I don't have in that. When everybody's Fred, like, Fred Claus. When everybody's, even when everybody's like, whoa, that Indiana no, Jones no, no, no. Snowman. Even when I'm jabbing the fucking thing. That, <laughs> right, okay. Snowman. Oh, I'm walking in the fire. Yeah, I think that's what you should sing when we finish. Yeah, I think that's the closing out tune. Yeah, Snowman. Well, one more. One more Christmas <sighs> film. Christ almighty. You just need to push it out, didn't you? Push it further than it needs to be. Do you know what we should do? Well, if we have, if we do another one before Christmas, which is very unlikely. But if we do, we'll do the top ten Christmas songs. But we need one more Christmas film. I want someone to give me. Come on, a, you can do an it. absolute no. belter, like a classic. And um, whoever, who was it? Said Lethal Weapon. That's him. Hold your head in shame. Uh, oh. Come on, now, Kev. Come on, you can do it. Hey, we've got Paul Express. We're in the yeah? final stretch. It's, Gremlins is never a Christmas film, man. It, is Santa, it really? Is that not going to show? We haven't got Bad Santa at the moment. No, he was a wild card. We left him. Um, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Last uh -huh. Christmas. Uh -huh. they, loads of people have said um, The Wonderful Life and Die, who was the one who um, brought up the fire extinguisher the first time. Um, Thank and you. And caught, 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 <laughs> caught you off guard. Thank um, you. Fuck you. He said, um, "A wonderful life as well." Everyone's, oh, Rob. <sighs> What's he come up with? Love actually. 
Oh, Rob. Yeah, Rob, can I you... Almost, can... I almost feel like I should eject him from the chat. No, that's what I mean. You can never just, speak just again. Just ban him. Just ban him. Just mute him. So everyone can see him, but they can't speak to him. Can we all just have a collective Rob, shut your puss? <laughs> One, two, three. Rob, shut your puss. Bless him. Uh, Reese David Evans says, the hot tub time machine, was that set at Christmas? Reese. We are really scraping the barrel now, ladies and gentlemen. That is that is one of the worst suggestions I've ever heard in my life, Reese. <laughs> E.T., Jack Frost, Edward Scissorhands. Uh, Eddie Scissorhands, maybe. Might have a shout. Film? Karen says, uh, happy feet. Fuck happy feet. Oh, Bad Eddie Scissorhands. See, Eddie Di, Di just said bad Santa. We, he's on like right, the, bad Santa's coming in. That's the ten then. That's the is ten. That, is that what it is? Is that number ten? And everyone in the chat is telling Rob to fuck off. <laughs> Shut his fuss. And all Rob, sorts of, boss, mate. He's getting all sorts of abuse. Unbelievable. So yeah, bad Santa makes it the ten. I will, I will officially unveil them. Can't in a believe minute. Indiana Jones didn't make it. I can't believe Christmas Chronicles ten, didn't make it. It's fucking pish, that's why. Christmas... Who... Uh, I can't believe I haven't seen National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, James just said, is Meet the Parents one? Um, No, shut your puss. (laughs) Shut your puss. What is that? What's what's puss? You don't know it. It means jobby. It means a jobby. Jobby. A wee jobby. Love it. All right, top ten Christmas list, as decided by Dance the One Nest. Sigh and Super Kev. What's that? That is the Christmas Chronicle jobby page. Excellent. I told you, mate. I want it signed and sent to me. It's been signed. Ready to head off. Look at you. You're basically the same person. Yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful drawing. Is one of the best I've ever seen. So what is the National Lampoon one? Is that called Xmas Vacation, is it? Yes, mate. Okay. Just posting the rest into the chat. So, top ten Christmas films of all time. The official Science Super Care list is Elf, Die Hard 2, Home Alone, The OG Grinch, Scrooge, Bad Santa, Polar Express, Santa Claus the Movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and The Snowman. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Yep. Guys, it has been an absolute Christmas cracker of an episode. I've had a whale of a time. Mm-hmm. Kev actually broke me at one point. I couldn't stop laughing and crying at the same time. And Whoa. he's now fallen off his sofa. I'm good now. Just um, fell back. Just fell deep, deep in the centre. It's Kevin McNaughton, like you've never seen him before. He's a legend. He's a very, very funny man. And um, we've had a crack in time. Tell your friends about this show. Because just because it's a Christmas special, th- this is what this show is. Tell Every them. single Where episode. We start off slow with the Where Would You Rathers. Everywhere Look how they are. straight my finger is. <clears throat> E.T. was like that. Oh, James just said, isn't that 11? Have we miscounted? Going to have to remove one. One, two, James three, Evans. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it's ten. Come on, James. Kev's gone. Kev. Serious now. Because <laughs> we're, we're, we're wrapping up now, can't we? James we're Evans. Profes- you we're professionals. Who's James Evans? Phone up. Who the flipping hell is James Evans? Who said there's another one? <laughs> Who said there's an extra one? <laughs> James Costley said 11, What's and then up? he said, no, it's not 11. James Costley, right. shut your puss, because you've made me smash my phone up, because I got panicked, and I thought, fuck, I need to get another one. <laughs> Never again, um, Karen says, really enjoyed watching this this evening. Got it, I missed most of it. Karen, you can watch it on YouTube and Got Facebook it. straight after... Um, they come up and you can watch the replay. You can also watch the previous Karen, episodes. You can watch me on OnlyFans uh, at <laughs> <laughs> www.supercare.com Super slash naked. 
Jeez, you are a legend of of uh, of massive proportions. Gallant. I'm gonna Gallant. go home. I'm gonna go. Ho- uh, are you gonna subscribe? And I'm gonna watch <laughs> Super Kev's Only Fans. <laughs> I'm gonna watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Someone tell me I'm where gonna, I can watch I it. I watched Scrooge today. Is it on Netflix? National Lampoon's it's Christmas Vacation. Nope. Is it on Scrooge Amazon Prime? It's on Amazon Prime. Excellent. I'll have a look at that. So, uh, to wrap us up, um, tell your friends about this. This is always a good crack. We tell. always do it. We, we start with the Would You Rathers. We get in gently and then we have all start sorts of fun. Up. And we talked also. We talked the rebrand. We talked Would You Rathers. We talked Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. We talked Christmas films. We had a whale of a time. Kev abused some people, particularly Rob Boyle. But it's cool. all meant. It's all meant in in good fun. We uh, appreciate every single person who's watched and commented. Make sure you come back. We do the show about every sort of two to three weeks. But in the meantime, there's plenty of other shows you can watch with Cardiff City Legend, Andy Campbell, Monday every Monday and Friday live. Can I win? Uh, many. Many a, a footballing star has been on the sh- on the channel. Just check it out, and also you will find if you go to the Ace Podcast Nation YouTube and press subscribe and click that bell, you will not only get a notification every time we go live and upload a video, but you will also be able to click playlists and watch every single Kevin McNaughton show. That has ever been, whether it was in his initial appearance on Unscripted and Uncensored, is when he stepped in for Andy Campbell on the football shows, Crazy Football, which was the two-episode series which me and Kev started, but then had to bin off because they tried to ban us, banned us, but we're back, and we're unscripted, and we have a lot of time, a lot of fun. Have a great Christmas, guys. Um, A few comments to finish. Jason Jones says, have a good Christmas. Michael Jones says, give us a song to finish. We will. Yeah, or cares will. Tonight not, not yet, man. Oh, sorry, Come on, now. Wait. Wait. Ian Curtis says, great show. Kev is about to pass out due to the buck fast. I would uh, never. Who said that? Jason who? Jason Jones, no. J- Jason J- Jones. No, hang on. Me and you go and Ian drink Curtis for drink. Ian Curtis said that one. Ian Curtis. Me and you Curtis. drink for drink next time. And you will see... Even though I've got a voice of an angel. Voice of an angel. Everything's good. Michael Jones says... Uh, give us a song first. We got that one. Gavin says, played it from the beginning. I don't know what that means. Good effort. Um, well done, sir. James Costley says... Not 11. Got it wrong. Die says that's the same finger that pulled the pin. Laugh out loud. And it is. Get on the buck fast. A few people are saying that. Get on the Rob bucket. Boyle says, I loved it, boys. Even with all the shite you sent my way. Stay safe, stay safe and see you soon. Nice one, Rob. Have a good Christmas. Thanks, Thank you, Rob. Everybody, have a good Christmas. Um, we appreciate your support. We appreciate... Um, also, the people who send super chats on YouTube, that's very much appreciated. I, that's uh, that's really cool. And um, I, I can't thank you all enough. Um, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Um, Lethal Weapon is not a Christmas film. What? And that, that is the end of it. I'm not having that at all. Um, McLean! Um, I'm just checking. There's nothing uh, in very important to check. It's a lot, a lot of Merry Christmases, which we appreciate. We're getting to the song. Um, oh, there was what one song? comment which I want. You're going to sing that. Um, oh. Reese David Evans says, "Is there any more information on Kev coming to Cardiff? You accidentally mentioned earlier. Well, I accidentally mentioned it, so no. Basically, um, no. It's nothing like massive." We are going to do something at some point in some form later in next year, probably. But um, Kev's going to come down to Cardiff and we're going to film one of these together, either in a studio or in a hotel room or something. And uh, going to give it. it's going to be a pilot to put Tonight it on. Can you, can you imagine this show on, like, Talk Sport or Sky Sports? They'd never have us, never have us, mate. So uh, 
We have to do it ourselves. We'll do it in a pub. No, do it in a pub. The moment. But uh, yeah, you guys, have a great Christmas. Appreciate all the comments and stuff. It's been a great laugh. I know uh, this show's a bit different to everything else we do, but that's it's supposed to be. It's unscripted. It's fun. We are five seconds away from two hours. Ready? Kev, sing us out. Thank you for everyone for the support. Love you. Let's go. I dreamed a dream and time gone by. And when she wants one's heart bit giving. I dreamed a dream and time gone by.